Best advice for someone starting to learn ML. How can a 15 year old learn programming in AI? Please help. Oh, I want to learn on. programming. I want to jump to start. training oh, right away. What right resources? How did you learn? So, you want to know the best way to get started with machine learning, do you? <laughs> you guys see what I did there? I opened the video saying the title of the video. That has to be the equivalent of using the title of a movie within a movie. What if this is as good as it gets? <laughs> Moving on. So this is the number one question that I get these days. So I thought this week it'd be a good idea to take a step back and address this, try and help some of you guys out. So what's the best way to get started with machine learning? Unfortunately, I don't know how to answer that. You're all unique individuals with your own unique learning requirements. So on that note, remember to always feed your curiosity. <laughs> of course, I'm not going to leave you all high and dry like that. But I'm also not going to answer that question because simply put, I'm just not qualified. However, I can talk about what worked for me for getting started with machine learning and just hope that it's helpful enough for some of you guys. So let's get started. It's 2017 and I see this machine learning demo from Seth Blink showcasing the Mar IO bot that he made using machine learning algorithms. It was able to learn and over time play Super Mario World on its own. I was completely stunned with a crazy mix of emotions. Following this, I'd seen some other neural network bots that others made for other games. Then I came across the Carry KH Evolve Yo machine learning project. Then the StarCraft machine learning project. Some kid had made some Kanye West rap LSTM project. The OpenAI League of Legends machine learning project. Syntex Crazy GTA 5 machine learning projects. And yeah, enough was enough. I had to learn machine learning. This stuff was just way too cool. So I installed TensorFlow that night, downloaded some code from Syndex, and had absolutely not a clue what was going on in the script. The neural network did successfully train the model using the MNIST dataset, but every single modification that I did to the code resulted in errors. Now, this was partly due to me being completely fresh to the Python syntax, but uncomparably more so due to knowing absolutely nothing about how to write neural networks. So I took a step back and did what any seasoned newbie would do. I did a quick Google search for how to write neural networks. And what I found at the time was more humble jumbo math lingo and symbols that literally looked like an alien language to me. Take your perception with the sigmoid activation function transposed by the product of the derivatives delta vector matrices propagated backwards through time to result in a- Zarglar, no disrespect, but I have absolutely no idea what the hell you are talking about. At this point, I was feeling incredibly defeated, but I refused to take no for an answer. I've got a dream to fulfill. That's when I came across Andrew Ng's machine learning course on Coursera and Whoa, my great goodness. That course was also written in Zarglar. <laughs> I was able to get past the first couple chapters or however it's organized with no problem. But shortly after that, Andrew Ng started speaking Zarglar. Now guys, make no mistake about it. If you're starting your machine learning adventure like I did, there's going to be a huge vocabulary shock. Most of your confusion will come from not understanding the vocabulary. Trust me. And after realizing this, I needed to change up my learning tactics if I were to make it out alive. And so, I changed my focus to speak Zarglar instead. There were many terms and symbols that would recur over and over again that I would get stuck on. Terms like vector, sum, matrix, activation, function, propagation, different types of learning, etc. I've been working with vectors for a while now thanks to Unity 3D, but does it mean the same in this context? Well, let me research and find out. Turns out it does mean the same thing for the most part. Simply put, a vector is simply a one by n matrix. What the hell is this strange E symbol and how is it calculated? Well, let me also research that and find out. It turns out that this strange E symbol is actually the capital Greek character sigma. And it's just a mathematical way to indicate the summation of an array or matrix, vector, or however you wish to index it. Matrix multiplication? How do you multiply all of these numbers with all of these? Well, let me research that as well and find out. It turns out there's a particular structure to matrix multiplication. You have to multiply the columns of matrix A by the rows of matrix B. And due to this, matrix B has to have the same number of rows as matrix A has columns. Your result will be a matrix the same size as matrix B. And to calculate this new matrix, you just calculate all the products from each row A times column B. A lot easier than you probably thought. 
And this was the process that I did for months. Whenever I felt like I got good enough on understanding some material, say how to do matrix multiplication for example, I'd revisit some of my favorite machine learning resources, links are in the description, to see if they made any more sense. And man, I was so surprised how all of a sudden I was able to slightly better understand Zarglar. Give me some Zarglar. Yeah. And whenever it stopped making sense again, I'd isolate what I was having a hard time understanding, say for example sigmoid and other activation functions, type out a bunch of questions that I have regarding that, and research that independently. Speaking of which, huge shout out to KhanAcademy.com. Their site can teach you just about all the mathematical tools that you'll need to write your own machine learning algorithms. Though, you'll have to create your own curriculum. In the description, I'll just list a bunch of important maths that you need to learn or something like that. Anywho, I learned just about all the maths from practicing on Khan Academy, which actually gives me a good point to make. If you ever get to the point of writing your own machine learning algorithms, you're going to be given formulas and pseudocode most of the time. The log sequence goes negative one over n times the sum of natural log p times the target of i. Sorry, Clark. Go away. You are not wanted right now, man. Ow. My bad. So, with that, I'd say the best way to learn how to write machine learning algorithms is to get better at understanding pseudocode, how to calculate them, and all of its various interchangeable indices. For example, when you get to derivatives, it can be written like this, f of x with the apostrophe or prime symbol at the end, or like this, change in y with respect to x, dy over dx. They are both calculated the exact same way, but if you aren't aware, you could get confused when seeing one or the other. Most of the times in my experiences, devs will be pretty clear with their pseudocode, but if they aren't, well, they're probably a bit too fluent in Zarglar. To all devs creating a resource meant for teaching, please stay aware of this, and please help the computer. And that's pretty much the basics. You now have the exact recipe for machine learning success that I used. Of course, this is just an overview because you're essentially asking me to squeeze 9 months of studying into 9 minutes. But at least you're now equipped with something. Besides all that information, one of the best pieces of advice that I can give you is to start off with a simple feed for a neural network example. And here's a good one. Make a text color predictor that when you feed it red, green, and blue values as inputs, try to train it to predict if either dark text or light text should be used over this color to make it readable. I think this is a great sample project to focus on to learn the basics. And trust me when I say this. Try to write your neural network from the very beginning. I'm talking day one, right once this video ends. In fact, boot up your IDE right now, because it's cool and all to understand how to write neural networks in theory, but writing one practically is a totally different rodeo altogether. You'll go to write this neural network, you'll get stuck, and boom, there you go. You have your first question to research. And then just keep up this process until you're successful. I super wish I had this advice from the start. I could have probably cut the time it took me to learn in half. Understanding how to convert the pseudocode into your favorite languages is honestly the most important thing to learn. There isn't a one-size-fits-all neural network. In fact, when you learn how to write neural networks from a bunch of different teachers, please note they're not always going to be using the same number of inputs and hidden layer nodes, activation functions might not be the same, some might say bias, not bias. Yeah, this is why pseudocode is really important. At some point, you'll need to rely on others' research and code if you really want to truly be able to have a great grasp on how to write your own machine learning algorithms. Especially at the fact that this space is still open research and there's something new announced almost every week it feels like. So keep that in mind. And the last important piece of advice that I want to share is, you don't have to take this route. To put into perspective, it's like computers. If you really wanted to, you could build a computer from scratch. But you can also just buy a fully made computer and they'll both do the same thing in the end. I personally wanted to learn how to make neural networks from scratch because I am an insane control freak. But there are things like TensorFlow, PyTorch, Theano, Keras, and other machine learning frameworks that are just like the fully made computer metaphor. You can watch tutorials and jump right into how to use these. You won't have to worry too much about things like derivatives and matrix multiplication activation functions. Those frameworks were for the most part take care of the heavy lifting for you. But of course, the trade-off is that taking this route when something inside breaks or isn't working right, you could have a hard time figuring out what's going on. Really, it's all a matter of what you're in it for. Alright guys, I hope this episode really helps you all out. If you have further questions, just leave them in the comment section and I might make a follow-up. But other than that, if you want to help support this channel, please do one or all the following. Please subscribe to this channel if you haven't already. Please hit that bell icon to be notified when I upload a new video. Please leave a like on this video and come follow me on the social media. <laughs> 
all this stuff helps the channel grow a lot more than you probably think. But whatever the case may be, remember to always feed your curiosity.